everyone. Today we're going to talk about unit conversions. This is a strategy that allows us to change the units of the number while keeping the value or the amount of that number the same. We use this all the time. So for example, I can talk about the same amount of time with different units, 60 minutes and one hour. Or I could talk about my height with different units. I could say I'm just over five feet, or I could say I'm 61 inches. Those are two different numbers, they have different units, but they're the same amount of height. I haven't changed height just because I am suddenly measuring myself with different units. Before we jump into unit conversions, I would like to review a few different mathematical principles that we'll use during this um, lesson. So the first one is multiplication and division symbols. So as a reminder, parentheses are the same thing as multiplication and a fraction bar is the same thing as division. So we use those interchangeably. Another math practice we'll use is multiplying by one. So I know that if I multiply any number by one, I get out that same number. So six times one is just six. You could also write that with parentheses, six times one is six. And the same thing goes for division. I can divide anything by one and come out with that same number. So seven divided by one equals seven. Another thing we'll use is simplifying fractions to one. So any number divided by itself is one, right? So nine over nine is one. Could do 123, right? 123 is a pretty big number. But when I divide it by itself, I just get one. So if I have the same thing on the top and the bottom of a fraction bar, it simplifies to one. To take this a step further, our last math strategy is cross cancellation. So this is sometimes used when we talk about crossing out zero. So if I have 100 over 10, if I have the same like zeros on the top and the bottom of a fraction bar, right? It can get rid of the ones that are the same. So that would give me 10 over one, right? Or just 10. And we also use this when we talk about common factors. So if I have say six over three, the factors of six are two times three. And so I see a three on the top and the bottom of my fraction bar. So I just get rid of that and I'm left with two. So six over three is the same thing as two. I'm hoping that these are skills that are all review for you, even if you haven't seen them in a little bit. Um, but if you want to review them or talk about them more, come find me in office hours. Okay, our general setup for unit conversions is that we're always going to make two fractions multiplied together. At the top of the first fraction, we're going to give our starting number and unit, whatever the problem gives us. Starting number and unit. And I always put that over one. It's the same thing as just writing the starting number and unit, but it helps me keep things lined up and prevents me from making some mistakes. My second fraction is something that I like to call a unit converter. It's the tool that we're going to use to change our starting number and unit into our new units. This fraction is equal to one meaning that it has the same thing on the top and the bottom, but it won't actually have the same number. It's just gonna have the same value. So it'll have, like my height, right where it's inches and units, it's gonna have the same amount, but different units. I wanna make sure I have my starting units on the bottom and my new units are the units that I want on the top. Great. And then I'll multiply those two things together and I will come out with my answer. Okay, this is a little easier in practice. So let's do a couple of examples. Leave that set up for us. All right, so in our first example, Ms. O'Brien is trying to increase her water consumption and her doctor suggested that she drink about two liters of water every day. However, her water bottle measures the volume in ounces. So how many ounces of water should Ms. O'Brien drink each day? So the first thing I want to do is pick out the things that are important in the problem. And I want to make something that I like to call a conversion plan. What am I starting with and where am I going? So in the problem, I see that I have two liters and I have ounces. So I'm starting with two liters and I'm trying to get to some number that has the unit ounces. My conversion factor, my unit converter is, is here. Um, 
and I just Googled this, right? One ounce is the same thing as 0 0.03 liters. And so now I'm gonna do my setup. I'm gonna make two fractions multiplied by one another. I'm gonna start with what I know, the first part of my unit converter, or the first part of my conversion plan, two liters. I'm gonna put that over one. And then I'm gonna take my conversion factor and I'm gonna put one part of it on the top and one part of it on the bottom. So here, I'm gonna take the part that's liters, my starting units, and I'm gonna put that on the bottom. And then I'm gonna take my part that's ounces, my new units, the units I want, and I'm going to put that on the top. So now I'm thinking about this fraction bar like it's one big fraction bar. And I'm looking for things that I have on both the top and the bottom, specifically units. And I see that I have liters on the top and on the bottom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of those liters. Then I'm left with just one unit ounces, which is awesome because that's the unit that I want, right, in my conversion plan. And then the next step of this is that I'm going to multiply across and divide down, and that will get me my answer. So if I do two times one, that's two on the top, one times 0 0.03, that's 0 0.03. So two divided by 0 0.03 is 66.7, and that's my answer. So for the sake of time, I'm not gonna write my full sentence, but Ms. O'Brien should drink about 66.7 ounces of water every day. All right, let's jump to our next example. In this one, Mr. Christensen is training for a 10 kilometer race, but he's used to measuring his distance in miles. He's running five and a half miles every day. And we wanna know if he's going to need to increase or decrease his distance on race day. So when I'm reading my problem, right, I see I have 10 kilometers and I see I have five and a half miles. And I could convert in either direction. For today, I'm gonna start with 10 kilometers and I'm gonna turn it into miles. But I could just as easily take five and a half miles and turn it into kilometers. Okay. And then I know because I Googled it, that one kilometer is 0.6 miles. I start by drawing my two fractions and I put the first part of my conversion plan on the top, my starting point, and I put that over one. Then I'm gonna break apart my conversion factor, right? and I'm gonna think about where I want those two pieces to go. I want the kilometers to go on the bottom so that it can cross out with my starting number, and 0 0.6 miles on the top, so my new units will be on the top. Right, and then I'm gonna cross out top to bottom, right? I see that unit on the top and on the bottom, so it goes away and I'm left with miles, which means that my answer will be in miles, which is great because that's what I have in my conversion plan. Then I'm gonna multiply across and divide down, multiply across, divide down. So 10 times 0.6 divided by one is just six. And so 10 kilometers is the same distance as six miles. So Mr. Christensen is going to have to increase his distance. He'll need to run six miles on race day. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, if you have questions, please stop by office hours and I'm happy to walk through some more examples.